Welcome and thank you for choosing to worship with us today at High Street Baptist Church online. Before we begin today's service, we would love for you to invite someone to watch online with you. If you are watching on Facebook, please share this video. And if you are joining us on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button and stay connected to all that is going on at High Street. No matter where you are today or how you may be watching, it is our prayer that this service will encourage and strengthen you as you worship and learn more about Jesus. Good evening and welcome to High Street Baptist Church Online. Uh, we want to welcome everyone to our services today. As you can see, we got quite the group up here. Don't worry, uh, this is one family. They've been social distancing this entire time. Uh, they've been in house together. So we're gonna actually talk to them a little bit and see how life's been going for them, making sure they haven't killed each other yet. Uh, but what we want you to do right now is tag someone to join our services right now. So if you can tag one, two, three, four or five different people who they need to be watching tonight's service. Find different members in our church. You can see who's live there on Facebook Live. And so tag them out uh, and make sure they're here and make sure they're watching tonight. Because tonight is gonna be, uh, it's a little different, but it's gonna be an encouraging message. That's the whole goal. Uh, if you know our pastor, you know that he loves testimony night at High Street Baptist Church. And so that's what we're gonna kinda attempt to do tonight. Uh, there's plenty of different people up here. We have Jacob over here. We have Miss Jody, which one of my favorite aunts. She's signing for the deaf uh, as we do it. She's multi-talented. Uh, we have Mr. Levi. We have Leah Boone. We have Brother Nick and Brother Austin over here. And so we have the whole group together. And we're going to really just have testimony night here at High Street Baptist Church. So we want to make sure everyone is able to join us. Uh, make sure you tag someone to join us. And during tonight's uh, service, don't or feel free to comment. Mm -hmm. Let me just say that we're going to be asking questions. I have some trivia here in a moment, and we have things to give away. We're going to be giving away uh, red box movie codes. Uh, we have uh, free Pizza. pizzas to give away, yeah, right? And so we have Starbucks gift cards to give away. So you're going to want to make sure you comment, okay? Because at the end of the service, when we do our big giveaways, we're going to go through the comments and kind of decide from there. So don't be afraid to comment. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you go ahead and uh, look on your Facebook Live as well. And so you can comment and follow along with us. And so I already introduced our helpers. I said this is our testimony night. So let's start out with some questions. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to ask a question. And you, whoever the first person to comment on Facebook Live, then they will win a free Redbox movie, okay? So you can comment on Facebook Live. Let's say I don't have Facebook, okay? Let's say you're either below 18 or above 80 and you don't have Facebook. Uh, you can text Brother Nick. Brother Nick, what's your cell phone number? <laughs> That's a trick question. It's not a trick question. <laughs> Brother Nick, people need access to you, one of the pastors here. Yep. You want to give it out and so they can text in the answers? Brother Chad, is, uh, if you can find my number and text it in, you might win something. Okay, okay? okay there you go. That's so, fair enough. But fair hey, enough. I see a lot of people just now logging on, so let's go through it one more time. Hey, tonight is going to be about testimonies. It's going to be encouraging, and uh, we want you to play a big part, okay? So you need to hop on right now. If you do not know how to message somebody on here or tag somebody on there, ask somebody younger than you, and uh, it is very important. We want you to tag somebody right now. Find somebody that's in a Sunday school class, somebody that you sit beside in church, and we want you to tag them on here right now. We need your comments, okay? We need feedback tonight. It's only fun if you join us tonight. And so we're going to go right into some questions, I think, right now. Yeah, it's good to see uh, my mamma, Mamma Sutton, joined us on Facebook uh, Live. That. We just want to wave hi to her. Logan uh, Ashworth. Good to see some of you guys. Kara, it's good to see that you're on live listening to church. You need it. And so it's good to see you on. You need to get your fiance on too so he can get it. So I want to start with the questions. Uh, now just remember, we're in the age of social media, and there's a little bit of a lag on Facebook Live. So I'm going to ask two questions, and you comment on the very first one. And the first one to comment is the winner, okay? And at the end of it, whoever gets the most right gets another prize. So you want to keep commenting, keep answering. It's going to be a good time. All right, question number one. So remember, comment on Facebook Live. What type of insect did John the Baptist eat in the desert? I'll say it again. What type of insect 
did John the Baptist eat in the desert? Levi, you got any ideas? Am I allowed to, uh, am I allowed to answer? I mean, if you know it. Okay. Uh. <laughs> now remember, you got to comment. First, you guys keep watching. No, it's not grasshoppers, Allie. Okay. <laughs> Levi, what do you think it was? Uh, I think it is uh, locusts. Okay. What? Oh, who won it? Allie commented for the second time. I think we should throw that out. She's not allowed to get it wrong. Yeah, the first time. yeah she already had so one can. guess. So, Just Cheryl awesome. Mahaki, well, congratulations. Yeah. You are our first winner. Yeah. Way to go. Yeah. You know the word. Question number two Who were the first apostles or the first disciples called to follow Jesus? Who were the first disciples called to follow Jesus? Um, oh, you have a mic. Yeah. Austin, do you know? No, don't answer yet. Don't answer. We're going to give our, we're yeah, gonna give our viewers a chance to do it. So as you're commenting on that one, I'm going to ask you another one to get ready for. Who asked Pilate for Jesus' body after the crucifixion? Who asked Pilate for Jesus' body after the crucifixion? Now, Brother Nick, did anybody get the first two disciples yet? Do we have any even I, I haven't seen any comments. I've just got a couple text messages. But uh, they were all in the first question. Uh, it looks like a lot of people got the first question right. Which was locust. So good yeah. job. You guys know but, the word. But Cheryl Mahaki already won. So all right. the, the, se the second Elkins. question. Oh, did she get Elkins it? Elkins just commented in. She said Peter and Andrew. That's, that's correct, right? That is correct. That's correct. Wow, that was a tough job, one. Elkins. These are not going to be easy, okay? So normally it would be our Bible teachers that are going to get them. I can already imagine Miss Jolene and Miss Sikarik raising their hand first in church, right. answering all the questions. The so let's see how we're going here. Oh, um, hey. Question number three. Charles question. E. Manus the third on Facebook got the got the third question right. Joseph Charles of E. Manus, pastor, good to have yeah. you live today. You are the winner. Man. Question number three. All right, let's go to the next question. What is the shortest book in the New Testament? All right, this one is an easy one, maybe. Um, if you know the books of the Bible in the New Testament, what is the shortest book in the New Testament? And as you're thinking about that or commenting on that, I'm going to go ahead and ask another one. Who is the high priest of Jerusalem who put Jesus on trial? Who is the high priest of Jerusalem who put Jesus on trial? Oh, hang on. I think I have a winner, guys. Oh, Miss Jolene, you were close, but Sam Garcia was the first to comment. Sam the man who sits in the front row every service. You got question number three. Way to go. All right. So let's see who can get the next question, which was who is the high priest of Jerusalem? who put Jesus on trial. Uh, as those answers are coming in, I'm going to go ahead and ask the next one. All right. Who was the king of Judah at the time of Jesus' birth? Who was the king of Judah at the time of Jesus' birth? All right. You guys be watching. Did anybody get the high priest question yet? Brother Nick, anybody yet? Uh, it looks like... Uh no, uh, Jordan, you, you were wrong with Jude, by the way, guys. We already got that. It was, it was second John, but good guess, good guess. Um, let's see if anybody got the uh, high priest one. Hmm, not yet. And who was the king of Judah? So we want to know who is the high priest of Jerusalem who put Jesus on trial, and then who was the king of Judah at the time of Jesus' birth? And who was first, Leah? Christina Elkins. Christina Elkins again. That's two for her. Who she have there? Who, who did she say? Herod. Oh, that was the second question. She didn't get the first one, though. The high priest. Yeah, I'm still looking for the high priest. So if anybody knows that one, I'll leave it out there. Um, Herod was the king of Judah. And so I would give that one to Christina Elkins. All right, so she has two. My dad, he, he cheated. He doesn't need to win. All right, next question. While people, oh, Christina Elkins again. Caiaphas. Caiaphas, yes. way she to go. Scared it up. Hey, it's a good thing we have the best uh, kids teacher right. in all of the country, in all of Ohio, everywhere you can think of. Christina Elkins is Listen, can this our up. teenagers at least just like Google the answer faster? I mean, come on. Nick, I who is their one, youth pastor, by the way, One Levi? teenager. Come on, guys. Br Brother Nick. Make your uh, youth pastor look good. Brother Let's Nick. Let's go. I'm not sure you taught us these questions. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. And no, um, I'm not sure you listen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go through. Uh, let's do one or two more. For how many days did Jesus appear to his disciples after his resurrection. So after Jesus rose again, how many days did Jesus meet with his disciples before he ascended into heaven? 
Now, for some of you uh, high schoolers, I just taught you this in Bible class. Yeah, and I think we should ask Jacob Mena. Jacob, off stage. That is how many days? Answer. Come on, Jacob, you know Can I this. I get a shout out to my friend Google? Can we get, can we get <laughs> shout out Google, to him? Huh? Allie, you're wrong with 30. Aren't you a Bible um, college student? <laughs> I got this. I, I, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Mackenzie Archer was the first one. There she one. is. Way to go, Mackenzie. Good job, Mackenzie. You listen in my class. I am so proud. All right, way to go, way to go. Uh, last question, okay? Last question, here it is. Remember, anybody who gets one of these right, it's a free Redbox movie rental, so there you go. Uh, last question. Who went with Paul on his first missionary journey? Who went with Paul on his first missionary journey? journey comment in this is the last question uh, for the trivia and so make sure you comment in you guys keep looking it is good to see that we do have a lot of bible scholars in here david farley got the right answer David's jordan oh, yeah. i mean he probably guessed like five times but he eventually got it right <laughs> good uh, job, so it's jordan. good caitlin good to see you good to see you hi all right she's finally watching and silas oh, mm, no. we thought she knew it all but <laughs> Sorry, Miss Elkins, no, that will be me. incorrect, hopefully, because hopefully I have the right answer. You're probably more right than me. David nope. Farley says Silas. Guys, you're going to have to check like with me. Strike two. Audrey said Timothy. Timothy, that, right? that is incorrect as well, Audrey. Lana. Good guess. Strike three. No. Oh, okay, Lana Manus. Lana Manus. Barnabas. Barnabas. Job, Way Lana. to go, Lana, wherever you are. <laughs> Way to go, okay? Way to go. We're going to switch gears. So hopefully you guys enjoyed just a little trivia, get your mind working. Remember, we want you engaged, so good job there. Uh, Brother Nick now is going to ask some general questions for this Manus family up here on stage. Now, he's going to ask some questions, and here is the goal. Uh, it's not just for them to answer, which they are going to answer. They don't know the questions yet, but they're going to answer. To the, <laughs> I mean, they're going to be truthful and to the best of their ability. But as Brother Nick asked the question, we want you to comment what your answer would be within your family, okay? So Brother Farley, as you're watching on Facebook Live, if Brother Nick asks a question and there's something that pertains to your family, go and shout it out what it would be with your family, all right? So keep those comments going, and we'll go ahead and leave it to Brother Nick to start asking some questions. All right, so we did not prep these guys, and so... Uh, we're just going to ask some random questions that I think will apply to most of our families. And so we'll keep it light and hopefully this will be fun. But uh, we do want you to engage. So comment, still comment on this. And so we want to look back and see some of your answers. So we'll start out with the first question. Uh, you know, I, I would say probably Jacob or Levi. Uh, what would you consider, uh, what takes up too much time? As you've been home, I know Levi, you haven't been at school. All right, you've probably been sleeping in until about lunchtime every day. No, this guy works. Jacob, too. Uh, as you've had more time, what, what do you feel takes up too much time at home? Oh, boy. Remember to comment online. What takes too much time for you? Too okay. much time. But, Jacob, go ahead. I, I can't say my girlfriend. Cause <laughs> I love my girlfriend but um, I've That's actually good. been working more. That's um, good. Since this virus, since I've been home. So I've been working a lot. Levi, what about you? Um, I will say that Jacob is constantly on uh, video games on his phone. <laughs> so uh, yeah. he's always trying to Calling give me a game with him. I'm like, dude, Listen, I'm this, busy. I'm not, this might Bible, end up know? in a fight tonight. So, I'm not okay? a gamer. I don't. I don't like even a, know this is like a presidential what debate right now. Xbox. Like, <laughs> this is why we have their mom in between them right now. <laughs> All right, just to make it a little more interesting, maybe I should ask Leah what takes up too much of Austin's time? at home since all of this went down, the pandemic, you know, at Careful. home more. I'm sure he spends more time with you, right? Careful. Absolutely answer, not. Answer truthfully. We're, we're in the house of yeah, God. I will answer truthfully. Are, it would have I just to work be too hard, right? Video games. Oh, Ooh. man, video Busty. games. That's wow. How many hours a day do you think he would play? <laughs> would you put a number on it? Real talk. Not in that that to he say. could be like in the Word, reading the Bible, you know? Um, we're going to pass Just too many. That just too many. Okay. <laughs> This is great. Too this many is count. So we got some video game. Uh, I, I, want, I want to comment on uh, one of the comments we got from my mamma, which, on. bless her soul, she said, getting out of bed in the morning, it takes oh, her too much her. time. <laughs> mamma, we love yeah. you. That's right. Let's go to question number two. I guess this will be easy. Miss Jody, if we can, uh, we, we want to hear you talk tonight at some point, okay? So uh, what has been the best thing that you have got carry out for your family? Oh, carry out? Or do you just cook every night? No. You cook a lot of nights? <laughs> she just, you yeah. just, come on look now, me your in kids, the eyes your kids and tell are me up that here. you cook every night. 
if, if you're voice. I don't cook every night. <laughs> I have a lot of Chick-fil-A. children, and they like to buy food out and bring it home. So there we go. What, what is your favorite restaurant, maybe, then? Chick-fil-A. 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 Nice. Can't yeah. go wrong. Chick-fil-A salads. Nice. There you go. <laughs> Okay. I uh, just want to say I like keep going the comments uh, for the question of spending too much time. Caitlin said shopping, shopping online. online. Uh, so how many true. women out there can testify? How many That's men right. out there can testify? You spent a little too much time shopping online. Yeah. Le Levi's a shopper. I'll Levi's a shopper. <laughs> he hey, likes to scroll and purchase. And then, Brother Nick, your wife says cooking all day every day. Is that true? Cooking all day every does day. Does she wow. spend all day cooking? My wife, I mean, she is just, she is the best wife in all the world. And she does cook a lot. It Amen. is taking a lot. You know, she, she goes to the grocery store. We've only been able to go about a week at a time time from her not being able to go back to the grocery store, but she has done an awesome job cooking mm -hmm. at home. All right, yeah. I love you. So <laughs> that's what I was supposed to say. You get so, the job. Oh, man. So I guess uh, another telling question, question maybe uh, as a family, what, what have you guys enjoyed doing as a family together? I would like to hear this from our viewers, okay? Um, you know, the families out there, what have, what have you guys done more? What has brought you, I guess, closer over this time as a family? Well, I think I would like to answer this one, seeing as I got put on blast for video gaming. <laughs> um, this side of the Manus family has decided that Call of Duty Mobile, which you can play on your God, phone, Duty they Mobile. all decide to play together. <laughs> they have their own clan, and they play all the time, seeing as they're blasting me for playing video games, but I think they've all realized that they love playing video games on their phone. And for those of you that have Snapchat and are friends with me, know the proof that I have sent of my wife constantly playing video games. Hey, uh, oh, yeah. This, this, so. is, this is supposed to be encouraging, so. so. Yeah. We're, not, we we're just, not being critical yeah. here, encouraging yeah. time. Jacob, I was just saying, I think yeah. they've all figured out Jake. that they love playing video games together. <laughs> yeah, I, I've got something. So we haven't really had church on Sunday nights. Sometimes pastor does live stream. So we, we've started a Bible study. And so my dad's been going over some doctrinal things with us, which has actually been really good. But I think probably my, my favorite part of the whole Bible study has been uh, Levi singing specials for us. <laughs> he Levi. starts us out with the special. So I don't know if he wants to share with that. Levi, that, listen. Hey, Levi, that would be encouraging. That would be encouraging. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> this is supposed to be an encouraging message. I think the last tonight. song that he sang was um, A Wise Man Built His House Upon the Rock. <laughs> so I don't know if you could do it. Maybe show us the motions. Or... I, I did sing that song, but... Um, you know, my talent, I just don't want to show that to the whole world right now. But it's for so, Jesus. It's for Jesus. It's for Jesus. It's true. Yeah. This is Wrong true. Just a, little, just a little, little bit of it. I can't. No, I you can't. got it. <laughs> Maybe just the chorus, okay? Just the chorus. Just the so. chorus. Go ahead. Broke the chair. <laughs> Come on, you're good. Come on, Levi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, as he's thinking about it, okay, I do want to read some comments on what you guys have been doing, which has been awesome. Board games. I think you guys do a lot of board games, too. Yes. Yeah. Um, walking outside, um, eating together as a family. Miss Hastings says, uh, Hastings Backyard Olympics. Uh, make sure you guys nice. video that. Okay, I want to see Ethan with the high jump. Can I sign okay. up yeah. that? Where, That's where do I sign awesome. up? I think the funnest thing that I did uh, with these guys, because we're all neighbors and family, we had the best outside wiffle ball game. Uh, it almost ended in a fight, but it was fun. Okay, so it was pretty good. If anybody good. knows a good, trustworthy umpire, uh, send me his number, because we need one of those. Yeah, <laughs> one of those. Brother Nick, any more? Yeah, I would, I would say th those are all good. And so maybe one other question, personally. Um, who would be considered the peacemaker or the instigator in your house? Who would be the peacemaker and who would be the instigator? I think Miss Jody wants to say something here. Well, I'm the peacemaker. Well, Jacob is no, the no. instigator. Uh -oh. yes. Jacob is the instigator. And Bethany, she's not as hey, quiet whoa, whoa. as people uh -oh. think. Hey, she man, right so there. she's got everybody. Yes. Cool. Get her. Bethany A wolf and Jacob, in sheep's clothing. They, yeah. they go around. We're also I, the favorites, also so, yeah, so I definitely think I'm the peacemaker, though. We'll, yeah. we'll put that out there. Uh, yeah. True. I can no, see that. Brittany. Brittany is a peacemaker. That's awesome. But she's not, she's not with us. I, I figured you would say Brother Sid. Lana. <laughs> no. no <brother>. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Hey, tell us at home, uh, who, who's the peacemaker? Who's the one that stirs the pot? Or who's the one that kind of calms the fights? We, we would love to see that on there. Chad, I would you definitely say I'm the peacemaker in, in my house. 
You are? Definitely a peacemaker. Yeah, there's just a lot of comments that want Levi to sing his song. <laughs> oh, wow. So there's a lot of requests I, out there for Levi to sing his song. I can go to the um, drums if he needs me to. For the, <laughs> for the viewers, yeah. I will tell you this. If you private message me, I can send you the song. <laughs> I've seen those videos. If you really want to be blessed, I can do that. But live air, it's just, it's difficult. Really? Sure, a viral video will come out of this. You're right. So. Yeah. Kara, Kara says, spending lots of quality time with her parents. That's Amen. awesome. Amen. David Farley says all of them. I don't know if that means they're all instigators or they're all peacemakers. <laughs> I don't know, but he says all of them. Um, let me go and keep going with some questions here. Let me go ahead and go to Levi. Let's put you on the spot here. Okay, okay. You know, you're a senior in high school. We really have someone from each age bracket kind of with us. Uh, Levi was a senior here at High Street Christian Academy. It was his last year. He was going into the fourth quarter. And then bam, quarantine. Praise the Lord. Virus. Yeah. So how's that been going for you? How's, how's online schooling been going? Well, if I'm being honest, I uh, do not like online schooling one bit because, uh, you know, me personally, I'm a very big procrastinator. And so when I go to school, it's like, yeah, I can procrastinate. And I can still squeak by, you know, I can. But then it comes to online and it's like, okay, this is due now. You have to get it done. And that, uh, yeah, I've struggled, struggled with yeah, that. Yeah, I'm his teacher. He, he kind of yeah. has, but we'll, we'll let that Come slide for on. now. <laughs> um, let me ask you this. Your dad is kind of famous, okay, for, sure. his, for his corny jokes. Him and used to be your uncle to him. They love their corny jokes. That and the one-liners. Yeah. And yeah, he has good one-liners. What do you, What do you think is the most famous one? I know he's told you some in the last month yeah. or so. You yeah. got any um, off the top of your head? Well, I can tell you this. Uh, my dad is not the biggest jokester. You know, he he'll 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 uh, he'll crack some jokes every once in a while, and he'll slip you know the one-liners oh, yes. in there, but. But as of just straight out jokes, uh, he's not he's not the most talented in that okay. area. Well, so we'll I, don't, let that slide. I don't really have one off the top of my head, but you oh know. My God. Well, let's do something. Let's keep getting it. Start getting a little serious. Bring some Bible in here, um, Levi. For the teenagers out there, uh, for those who maybe be seniors in high school, um, the other teenagers in school who are kind of missing out on school, they're doing online schooling. What has God shown you uh, through this time of the pandemic, the last couple of months? What has God shown you or something either in Bible reading or he's shown you personally that you'd like to share? Um, well, I'd say in my uh, devotions, um, it was two things. They kind of were back to back. Uh, I read one one day and then uh, the next day, and they kind of went in with hand in hand with each other. And the first one was to have patience. Um, you know, we, we see in the Bible, you know, God blesses people who wait. And... Um, you know, with us in America, we, we want everything now. We want everything um, as soon as we can get it, but we've had to learn with the coronavirus, you know, you can't just go out and do what you want. You have to wait, stay at home, you know. And then the next day was um, have faith. Um, and I was reading um, Hebrews chapter 11. It was talking, it had many, many different examples. Uh, it gave Abraham and Isaac how he had faith. And many different people, how they just had great faith and God blessed them. And I think those two go hand in hand together, you know. As seniors in high school or whatever walk of life you're in, you know, your time will come. Um, you know, this uh, coronavirus, it, it kind of put you to the side. You know, you, we didn't get to celebrate senior year as much or do your graduation parties and stuff like that and get what you wanted. But, you know, if, if we just have patience and have faith that God will take care of us, then... Um, he will bless us, and I know everything will work out. So that's that's uh, what I've learned through this. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, patience and faith. Uh, that's good. One final question for you. Um, what's the best meal your mom has cooked for you so far during mm. this quarantine? Well, as we discovered earlier, um, and she's <laughs> laughing. As we discovered. Uh, my mother doesn't really enjoy cooking as much anymore. Okay. So, um, you know, honestly, I love me some cinnamon toast crunch <laughs> or cereal. So Solid. that's probably been my favorite well, that's meal. Good. So that's does good. she does she pour the milk for you? Or? You know, she gets me the spin. Okay, so there we go. That helps. I, I will say this: she came home with little bites today. Oh, the little chocolate chip muffins. Man. Best mom in the world. Best mom. <laughs> Number one. And Jody, I have a question for you now. How's quarantine life? We heard all your you know your children's opinion. How's quarantine life for you? <laughs> as she signs and does everything else. It's hard to sign and talk at the same time, yeah. but I, I enjoy spending time with my children, so it's Most, different mostly for me, me because if you would have asked that question when my children were small, I probably would have had a completely different answer, but I, I love being quarantined with my family, so I've enjoyed it. I'll awesome. miss when everyone 
Leaves. <laughs> Who's your favorite? <laughs> oh, me? It's, it's Her son in law. <laughs> Just say it, mom. Just That's say it. That's a good mom answer. Say it. I'm your favorite. If you were to share a word of encouragement to either the ladies in the church or really everyone in the church, um, what would it be? Everyone loves my Aunt Jody, so oh, we all listen to her anyway. No. So, what's a word of encouragement? I'm, I don't really have wise words of yeah. encouragement. <laughs> That's your mom. But I, I don't know. I would say the other day I was listening um, to the radio on my way to work, and um, I don't remember what the preacher's name was, but he was talking about how God cares about the sparrow, the birds who don't even have a soul. So how much more does he care about us? Um, and so that was encouraging for me, that God cares about us no matter what our situation I feel like everyone's going through the same situation, and um, God will take care of us. We just have to put our trust in him, and, um, you know, God always takes care of us. Mm -hmm. we, we might not see it now, but that's why a lot of um, older people always have great wisdom. I'm not talking about me, but because they've lived, they've lived through it, and then and they they know that God, even though it might have been hard at times, always God will take care of you. So she taught me how to preach. I, I can tell. Now, I enjoyed it. You're not old, but you do have a lot of wisdom. So I would yeah. ask you to, you know, take that. Uh, Jacob, it's good to have yes. you home. Uh, he's been home for the last, I guess, couple months. He had to, you know, uh, leave college and finish college online. So you really probably haven't even seen a lot of our church people yet. I have not. I have not. Um, so it's good to have you back here. Let me just go ahead and start with this. Jacob always has some good stories for us. So I'm going to go and ask you, that in the last, just something that's happened in the last two months that's, you know, that's just memorable, okay? Something that just happened maybe in your family, just a story. You got any stories for us? <laughs> Yeah, uh, this actually happened last Saturday. Uh, this is kind of funny. So my dad and I decided that, you know, we've been in the coronavirus. So we, we decided, I've been in California, haven't been able to hunt at all. So we decided that we were going to go a couple hours away and do some turkey hunting, do some four-wheeling, and have some fun. And we invited Lana and Levi to come down. Levi had to stay here and help with the church. And so they were going to come later. So we, were, we left, got down there, got settled in for the night. And two hours passed, and we're like, where's Lana and Levi? They, they left. Well, we don't have cell service down there, so we didn't know where they were. Well, then three hours passed, and I'm like, I'm going to bed. They, you know, I don't know. Levi's been going to this same place since he was, like, four years old. He should know how to get there. Well, the next morning I wake up, and uh, sure enough, Levi and Lana are there, and I'm like, where'd you guys go? Like, why were you so late? And uh, Lana said that they pulled into take a little potty break in the in the rest in the uh, gas station and she said she saw a sign that said welcome to West Virginia <laughs> so Levi was driving listen, listen. and no, he let's drove keep him in mind, to West Virginia they're trying listen. to go it's like towards Cincinnati area yeah completely and they opposite ended way. up in West listen, Virginia okay, opposite okay, way. here's the thing here's the thing <laughs> detour there's a there's a road all right yeah and it's good <laughs> there's a road Obviously. It's all you have to do is stay on 23 for like two like, hours and y. you get there it's a Y and I unfortunately took the left side of the road <laughs> But, you know, I just, what if I just wanted to see West Virginia? You yeah, know, I, I like hey, it. Levi, it was men, men don't use maps. No, like I, I, I knew exactly where I was going. Um, I knew I was going to West Virginia. I was just surprising her. So uh, sure. it was a good trip. Yeah, it was a good trip. Sure, it's sure. Okay. That's uh, awesome. Well, let's, let's, can we move along, chat? Wait, wait, wait. One more thing for okay, Jacob. Okay, one more. Um, because you can't, we, it is testimony night. It is. So we want to know what God has shown Jacob through these last couple months when he was in college and now that he had to come back, finish schooling online, uh, leave college early. What has God shown you uh, throughout this time? Well, um, it's actually been kind of a blessing to be able to come home um, during all this, spend more time with family, work more. Um, but one thing that kind of the Lord's been working on me about is I get super busy, I overschedule myself, and I just work way too much, and I just don't have time to relax. But throughout this coronavirus, um, we really see everything, almost everything has been shutting down, so it's, everything's been slowing down. So it kind of forces you um, to take more time um, to spend with family or to read your Bible more. Um, so it's really just been an encouragement to me to be able to just sit back, take some time, um, enjoy it right now, 
you may be cooped up inside your house with your kids or whatever, and you're just hating life right now. Um, you don't get to go out and explore or go to work, but really just enjoy the time that you have um, to be able to spend with your loved ones because um, you might not get that back. We, we're not promised tomorrow. Um, so it's really just been an encouragement for me to be able to just um, kind of slow down and uh, spend some time with people. That's cool. And if we could, I mean, let's just get Austin and Leah involved. How have you guys, I know you've been married, what, two or three years now? Three years. Three years. Is that right, Austin? <laughs> three years? Whatever she says. Okay, good answer. Uh, since you guys have been married, young married couple, how does that look, you know, right now, spiritually speaking, in your lives? What have you guys done to grow closer to God through all this? Played video games. No. Um, <laughs> we, we've uh, just a uh, prayer. Um, I, we've really enjoyed the family time, as Jacob said, on uh, Sunday nights and Wednesday nights or um, when there hasn't been a service or things like that here. Um, or a lot of times I know that we're re-watching some of the old services, mm-hmm. um, but we go ahead and do a, a personal devotional Bible study, and we, we re- I think we really enjoy that, or at least I know I do, and um, that's something we enjoy. And then uh, prayer, and uh, just Leah, uh, she texts me a lot of times when I'm at work, and it's just a blessing to see. She te- she'll text me something that she gets out of her Devo, um, and the time that she spends with the Lord and what the Lord speaks to her about. Uh, and that's just a blessing to me to see uh, God, you know, speaking to her in her life and things like that. And it's, um, it's, it's just nice to see. You got anything to add? Preach it. Um, yes, I would say Pastor set a, at the beginning of all of this quarantine, Pastor set 12 o'clock at noon every day, have a prayer time. And I love that because I'll be like, oh, babe, it's 12 o'clock. We got to pause what we're doing. And we get to spend that time praying together. And if I look at it as if this quarantine never happened, we would have never have done that. That's cool. So I'm very thankful that Pastor did it and that God has given us the extra time to pray together more. That's cool. And I know I saw a text, or my wife actually told me about a text that was sent out from one of our ladies in the church, Mrs. V, uh, just, just trying to rally everybody to pray through all of this. I mean, there's so many needs out there, and there's so many people that uh, if we just spent 10 to 15 minutes and just prayed for people, pray for our country, pray for our leaders, um, pray for your pastor. And uh, these are these are weird times, and so encourage families to pray. That's that's good. That's that's an awesome takeaway. So, I guess I'll go ahead and give uh, my testimony time yeah. uh, here, um, because like we said, we wanted this service to be really an encouragement. Um, it's easy to look at the negative. It's easy to get. I feel like you know, last couple months, you look at the news, you look at Facebook, everything's just kind of depressing. You get mad, and now that we're a couple months in and they still don't let us out of our house, people are starting to get more and more irritated. I mean, there's no sports, that you can't sit in a restaurant. I mean, it's just getting about that time. And I guess the one thing the Lord's been dealing with me about is this thing about joy. Um, And I wanna read just uh, two verses real quick. You can turn to it if you'd like, or I'll just read it here. It's in Isaiah chapter 61, uh, verses 10 and 11. And it says in Isaiah 61, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud and as the garden causeth the things that are sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all nations. And like I was saying, you know, uh, this time it's been frustrating for some people. They're going through a lot. They got a lot of issues, a lot of problems. I mean, when this whole thing started, it was the week before my wedding. And when it happened, the wedding came and about half the people were able to show up, our family and friends. So not everything went, you know, went to plan. Uh, The worst part about it, I couldn't go on my honeymoon. You know, woe is me. I know, that was bad. Um, But, and so it's just like one thing after another. Like I said, you look on Facebook and you see someone's opinion that it's not your opinion. And it's like, man, they're dumb. And then, you know, and then like they see my opinion. They're like, well, he's dumb. And so that's just, that's just how we've been. And God, I guess, kind of convicted me because it's so easy to be critical. It's so easy to complain. It's so easy to gripe. Um, it's like the, there's a story about a man uh, named Bert. He, he lived in England. He had a family. And he was at the dinner table one day. And he was known as, you know, a grumpy guy at times. He was a good man, but sometimes grumpy. And they were at the, they were at the dinner table. And the youngest, named Nancy, she was going around. And she was telling everybody, you know, each sibling what their favorite food was. 
And as she's going around telling each sibling what their favorite food was, uh, the dad popped in. He said, well, what's mine? What do I like? And she thought for a minute, and she says, well, you pretty much like what we don't have. And, you know, that's sometimes the case with us. Uh, it's, like I said, it's so easy to be, when we're going through issues, when we're going through hardships, when we're going through trouble, um, the reality is everyone goes through issues. Um, when I'm teaching an online class and nobody's responding to my teaching, I need to think that I'm not the only one in this boat. There's more people in the same issues as me. And if we really think of it, if we, if we really even read our Bible and you look at the people throughout Scripture, they went through a lot more trouble than we're going through right now. They had a lot more hardships, a lot more issues. And then here we are, we have to stay at home. Uh, we can still go to Wendy's and eat some cheeseburgers. And if they run out of beef, you can go to Taco Bell and get some cat food or dog food there. Um, but we're not really in that much trouble. But when we, all we do is look at the problems, see, that's where the complaining, that's where the criticizing spirit comes. And I wrote this down or I read this. It says, the difference between those who rejoice and those who complain is not their circumstances, but their focus. Some look at their troubles while others look to the Lord. And I guess that's what the Lord's been dealing with me about is, is stop looking at all the issues, okay? Because there's a lot of them out there, okay? Watch the news. Um, as we keep going here, everyone's going to have different opinions, whether it's politics, whether it's sports, no matter what it is. Um, everyone's going to have different opinions and things. And I just want us to realize that it shouldn't be our circumstances. That shouldn't be our focus. The troubles and the hardships shouldn't be our focus. It should be the Lord. And you see, um, Jesus is the source of this joy. And I guess that's where God's been talking to me is, is we can still have joy throughout our hardships. When in reality, they're not that hard. We're just having to stay home. Even if, let's say, we lose a job. Well, people in the scripture, people throughout history who are Christians, they went through a lot worse than what we're going through. And so it, it, it's sad sometimes as me as a Christian who I criticize, I complain, I, I get mad at those that I love or those close to me when Jesus is my source of joy. And the reality is, is I'm not, if I'm not having that joy, that's because I'm not connected to the source. And so I would just encourage the, the church family, and really that's what the Lord's been dealing with me about, is get connected to Jesus. Get my eyes on the Lord. Um, read your Bible. Have a devotion. Listen to some godly music. Uh, this morning I put on the high road. I don't even like their singing, but I put it on, okay? And, Who are those guys? Yeah, but... And just praise the Lord a little bit, okay? Uh, not everything has to be doom and gloom. We can still put a smile on our face. We can still have a good day. We can still enjoy time with our spouses or our families. And everything can be okay. But you got to connect to Jesus first. So get your eyes off all the issues, all the troubles, all the hardships. And get your eyes on Jesus. And do that daily. Um, the source of joy in Jesus is not just on Sunday. It's not just on Wednesday night. But it's Monday, it's Tuesday, it's 24-7, it's all day, every day, okay? It's every day. Get connected to Jesus. He is the source. We always have something to be thankful for. Uh, in that verse in Isaiah, Isaiah, it talked about the gift of salvation. It talks about being rejoicing because we have salvation. If there's one thing that we can rejoice in, it's that we're saved and that we have a place in heaven. Um, and that's really one of the greatest things that we can dwell on and think about when you're going through circumstances or hardships is that... We have Jesus. He's promised to never leave us. So get our eyes on him. Be thankful for all that he does. And let's have some joy. Let's not all be doom and gloom. Um, awesome. Anyway, that's Amen. just what he's been doing yeah. with me about. Certainly. I mean, the last, the last few months have been, um, you know, a, a little bit crazy. The word that comes to mind, uh, you know, in my life is conflict. I mean, what everybody's talked about up here, like we've all gone through something uh, over the last couple of months that have been different than what we've gone through in the past. But uh, I was reading in a, a personal verse that I've, um, you know, I've enjoyed over the last couple of weeks is Psalm, Psalm 37, five. It says, commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. That first part of that verse says, commit thy way, commit thy way. And uh, as Ms. Jody related to all the stories in the Bible, you think of the children of Israel, the conflicts that they've had to go through, uh, the story of David, the story of Joshua. Um, all of these people had to go through different conflicts in their life. I, I think of the story of Job and everything that he had to go through. But through all of that, we, we didn't see at the time God working through those conflicts, um, but we see that God knew best through them. And so the conflicts in our life, God is 
I'll use this. Is it breaking up a little bit? Sorry. Um, but the conflicts in our life, uh, you think of all the people in the Bible that we read about, the children of Israel, the story of Job, the story of David, um, all these people had, had to go through things in their life that were unforeseen circumstances. That literally, as they went through them, they didn't know that those were going to be life-shaping uh, conflicts that they were going to bring through and be able to see God work through those conflicts in their life. And so I think it's important that we realize that God knows best. Commit thy way. How are you committed to Christ through this pandemic? How are you committing to Christ when, when we don't have church? Uh, how are you committing to Christ when, when your schedule is all out of whack and America's in a frenzy and we don't have answers? How are you committing to Christ? Are you letting your life be conflicted or are you committing in a greater way? And uh, Psalms 37, 5, when it says, commit thy way, and then at the end of that verse it says, he will bring it to pass. I uh, read, read a story this, this past week. Um, in the early 1500s, the uh, Spanish conquistador Hernan, Hernando Cortez, he landed in Mexico with just a small army. And uh, he was there to steal the treasure of the Aztecs. And uh, they landed, and he was a motivator. If you read about him, he motivates. And uh, with this small army, uh, they landed, and they were gathering. And he was going to give, like, this last speech before they go into battle. And the first three words he said was, burn the ships. They had sailed over from Spain, uh, landed in Mexico. And the th first three words that I'm sure none of his army wanted to hear is, burn the ships. Because when your back's against the wall, your focus becomes on something greater than you. And I think that's important in, in our life that, hey, if we always have an exit plan in our life, a lot of times after we get through these hard times, we'll revert back. It's natural to take the path of least resistance. But burn the ships in your life. What, what is holding you up? What has been the crutches in your life over this time that you do not need to go back to when everything goes back to the new normal? What are the things in your life that you just need to get rid of and move forward for Christ? And I think that we could, we could take something from that story and uh, realize that, hey, listen, our back is against the wall right now. In America, our back is against the wall, but what is our focus on? Is your focus on Christ in your life? And I, I wrote this down. Commitment is the foundation to success. Are you conflicted or are you committed? Commitment is a foundation to, a, to success. Do you want a successful life? Parents, do you want your kids to have a successful life? What, what, are we, what are we doing? Are we committing to Christ? Have we found ways when it seems impossible to worship and serve the Lord, even though we can't come to church? Have we found ways in our, in our house? Have we found ways in our cars to worship and commit to Christ more fully? Are you conflicted? Are you living a conflicted life? Or are you committed, like the psalmist says? David says, commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and it says that he will bring it to pass. Most accomplishments in life have come out of conflict. So how are we going to make our way through this? And so that's my testimony tonight. And uh, I, I found that holding a verse, something that the Lord has spoke to your heart about, he, he can bring you through these conflicts in life. And uh, that's what's been so special um, in my life is, is no matter what I'm going through, no matter the situation that I've been dealt in this time in my life, God knows best. And um, we're going to get through this. And so it's just an encouraging uh, thought tonight from everybody. I'm glad that everybody's got to join tonight. And I hope as viewers and listeners that you've been able to participate as well. And so we want to hear what God's doing in your life. And uh, send in a video. Um, we're going to try this week to uh, maybe put something together through social media. We want to we know if you could send in through our Facebook page, High Street Baptist Church, we want to know how God is working in your family's life through all of this. If you could put together like a one-minute video and just send it to that Facebook page, we would love to put that together for our future services and be able to look back on what God brought us through. And uh, I, I think that would be special. So I think it would be. And uh I like what he said, being committed to Christ. You know, sometimes we do need to evaluate ourselves. And we could evaluate since quarantine started until now, how good a job are we doing being committed to Christ daily? And so, you know, don't feel guilty if you haven't done well because a lot of us are in the same boat. But let's start today and begin to push forward and start to be committed to him now when our backs up against the wall and be committed to Christ. So I like that. Like I said, Brother Nick was saying, this is our testimony time, mm -hmm. and we do miss it. We miss asking people to give, share, and testimonies because, you know, it's our church family that's that fellowship that brings us together. I miss Jackie, you know, preaching to us uh, when we do testimony time. Bless them, that's right. Um, so we do. If you can, uh, take a video. Um, make sure your phone is sideways, okay? Make sure your phone's sideways so it can look good. But we would like for you to share it. Message us on Facebook. 
and send us your video. And then we would like to kind of go through them and even post some next Wednesday because we miss seeing how God's dealing in your life. Uh, more than likely, God's dealing has shown you something that he hasn't shown us during this time. So don't be afraid to share that with somebody else um, because it is encouraging. Uh, none of us up here are really anybody special besides my Aunt Jody. Um, <laughs> um, but we can all do something. We can all share something because God's been good to all of us. And so take a video, send it in, and I know it'll be encouragement to somebody else, and then we'll try to show those next week. But I think before we dismiss, we need to give away our last two big prizes, right? Yeah. Yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's figure out what we want to do with that, Chad. And I'll just put a, a simple plug in for Mother's Day this Sunday. Mm -hmm. Mother's Day is this Sunday. We're going to do our second drive-in service, and uh, we want you guys to participate. Now, it is very important that you sign up. You have to sign up. Um, we'll be at max capacity. We're doing two services, 930 and 11 o'clock. And uh, we want you to sign up, okay? Please uh, message. Uh, I think that we'll put a slide up after this, but message Brother Chris, Pastor Chris, and uh, tell him uh, what spot that you want or what service time that you want to go to with you and your family. And uh, also, I think you can just message our Facebook and, uh, or just call into our church office. But we are so excited to honor our mothers this Sunday for Mother's Day. We're going to have the trailer still out here, and we're looking forward to seeing you guys. I know it's, it's weird right now. We cannot wait to see you guys. And also, we had a huge success here to end our COVID care month on Friday. We were able to give out 125 pizzas. We partnered with Big Tony and uh, Big Tony's Pizza right down the road here in Worthington. And uh, we were able to give out uh, all of 125 pizzas in I think about an hour. Amen. So it got a little crazy, uh, but we, I think we were able to be a blessing to a lot of people. So we thank everybody for giving to that, donating toward that. I think we were able to make a big difference in the lives of people in our community over the last month with our COVID care month. And so uh, Mother's Day this Sunday, and let's give some stuff away, right? Right, 9.30 and 11. Cheryl Mahawkey already signed up for the 11. So you can, there we even, go. you can even comment right there, and we'll get you signed up. Uh, we do want to give away to two different people. First one to comment in. Well, the first question is the first one to comment in. Um, and this is for anybody. Even you guys up here, okay, can comment in if right. you have a Facebook. Um, and so here's the first question. Oh, man, I don't know if I should do this, but I'm going to do it. What was... The sermon title from Sunday night's message. What a blessing. Who's the sermon? What was the sermon title from right, Sunday I'm night's message? I'm watching the comments, so We're I'll see you the, the first. We're watching the comments. This is, we will comment. email you a free pizza. Is it from? Pizza Hut or Papa John's. Pizza Hut you or Papa two, John's. Two so options. The, the, the first giveaway, they get the option of Pizza Hut or Papa John's, and we'll also throw in a Redbox movie voucher. There you go. Okay? So, so dinner and a movie. Dinner and a movie. First okay. one. Now, if you are going back to Sunday night's message because you didn't watch earlier, yeah. well. I'm not finding anybody comment right away, Chad. <laughs> well, you know, it was a good one. I mean, I, I one. wonder if Pastor Manus, if he is still even watching, yeah. remembers what Wait. Sunday night's message was about. Um, so we're going to give you a minute to comment. And then the other question for the giveaway, it's not really a question. Uh, we told you, we encourage you to comment uh, all throughout the service. So what we're going to do, we have about, I think, 40 or 50 comments here. So I'm going to have um, Leah to pick a number, one through 40. Yeah. Whatever number you pick. Whoever commented on that time in order gets the free pizza. And you can't look and back and use your And you can't look comments. back and look at yourself. Okay, does anybody have, oh, is it? So one through 40. I got, Nick, I think we have a winner before Leah goes. Okay. Um, Kimberly Hunter, that is a great job. Enemy of the cross, way to go. Enemy of the cross, um, Pastor yeah. Manus will be so proud that someone was listening and logged in on Sunday night. Um, so way to go there, Miss uh, Kimberly Hunter. All right, Leah, this is the second giveaway for the pizza. What number? One through 40. 12. 12. All right, there you go. So she comment number 12. Oh, who is it? Nick, can you look back? Oh, so much pressure. I don't want to be there's the one to lot, pick. There's a lot of pressure. Uh, All right, we will go through I don't them, know if mine's and, and we will Facebook you the winners. Uh, Miss Hunter, we will uh, Facebook you and get your email, so that way we can send that out. So way to go uh, there. Uh, uh, hopefully you enjoyed the message today. It was just testimony time. I want to thank Jacob, Aunt Jody, Levi, Leah, Austin, Brother Nick, um, for joining us, sharing their testimonies, and just letting everyone know what God's done in their life throughout this time. Um, 
be an encouragement to somebody else. All right, not everything has to be doom and gloom. We can have fun. We can enjoy life. Uh, and be here on Sunday for Mother's Day. Uh, and get your mom something, okay? Uh, if mom, if you're watching, I'll get you something, I promise. Thank you for joining us today. We pray that you have come away closer to Jesus it's than okay, you were we're not before. We're not off yet. Bro, to keep up with everything going out. on at High Street Baptist Church. <laughs> It's okay. My wife's running a live stream. She's never done it before. Or, Levi, can you go help her out? <laughs> sure, sure, sure. All right. Well, Levi's going to run up there. Oh, that was Mr. B. Mr. B, you can run that. Actually, before we do, Brother Nick, will you pray for us and we'll be dismissed today? All right, let us today. pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to just thank you and praise you for everything that you're doing in the lives uh, of, of each of us, Lord. We're so thankful for our testimony in you. We're so thankful for uh, our salvation through you. And, uh, Lord, we ask that you encourage us at this time. And uh, we ask for, you for anybody hurting out there, uh, Lord, that you'll give them grace and strength at this time. Lord, uh, bless our church. Help us to move forward, be with our pastor and uh, all of our people. Lord, we love you and uh, can't wait to get back to the normal. But, Lord, we're so happy and, and, and thankful for everything that you've done. And, uh, Lord, work through this situation and this pandemic. And we can't wait to see what you bring us through. In your name I pray. Amen. As we seek to advance the gospel and to lead people to become disciples of Jesus Christ for the glory of God. Thank you for joining us today.